Real quick, if you're looking for a different kind of film study, check out my movie channel. The link is in the description, so you can just click on it right there. I have a Dune 2 review on there. I have a Christopher Nolan tier list, a Quentin Tarantino tier list, a lot of other fun stuff. Check it out if you want. And anyway, let's get back to your regularly scheduled video. Well, all right, let's talk about Saquon Barkley, uh, the running back for the Philadelphia Eagles now. It's going to feel weird saying that. I want to talk about what he'll bring to the table. And, and first, I want to start off with a play like this, which is a passing play. So, uh, you know, for the Giants, they're going to have a receiver run a, a deeper route over the middle. This is more of just a clear out route. As that route, Barkley's route, is going to be the key one to watch. That's the one they're going to look at here. Yes, it is a bit odd that the Giants' first route they're looking at, the one they're, you know, the guy they're trying to scheme open in the passing game is their running back. But you know what? Uh, it's probably the right call as well. Uh, let's see what happened. Watch as Tommy DeVito on this play is going to take the snap. He looks over, and you see that this play works, right? Uh, Washington players picking it up, reading uh, the play, and trying to get over to cover Barkley. But it's just, it's, you know, a, a tough uh area to try and cover him here as one your linebacker and you're gonna have to run further deep down the field so that's it's just a mismatch watch as Barkley kind of blows right by him and you see for DeVito he's making this throw and it's an accurate throw but look at how open Saquon Barkley gets and you got to give credit to the Giants coaching staff and all that stuff of course but you definitely have to give credit to Saquon Barkley for having the athleticism to pull off something like this uh, it's you know really well done route Barkley is going to be able to make the grab on top of it. Not an easy catch as well. So for the Eagles, like, listen, I don't know how much they're going to do this stuff, but this is why sometimes the running back value question gets a little muddy because, like, we say, well, running backs aren't that valuable. Well, okay, that's probably true. Probably historically, we gave too much credit to the running backs and not enough credit to the offensive line. But Saquon Barkley isn't just a running back. He isn't just someone who runs the ball. He does so many other aspects. There's so many other aspects of his game, which is what's interesting. Also, like this one, just real quick, it's just like a crazy catch that he made. Like, look at that, like, sideline catch. Like, he's not just a, a receiving running back. Like, he is one of those guys, similar to, like, Christian McCaffrey, who, like, I legitimately think could have been a solid, like, actual wide receiver had they wanted to do that. They just went into being a running back instead, which, you know, financially might not have been the right call. But anyway, let's talk about his running back abilities, because at the end of the day, he is still a running back, and there still is value in a having a good running back. Like, that's not something that is valueless, and Saquon Barkley is going to show it on a play like this, where, so it's going to be, you know, see the blocking concept on the screen. They have multiple players pulling over from the offense's right to the offense's left, as it's going to be a run towards the offense's left. Right off the bat, you see the Giants, you know, well blocked by the Giants. That's not something you heard a lot in the Saquon Barkley era, but this one was well blocked. He's able to get to this point, but here's where things get a little bit interesting. What direction is Saquon Barkley running in? Well, I mean, it's kind of obvious what he's about to do, right? He's about to go towards the sideline. That's what we're all expecting. That's what would just logically make sense in this scenario. So a couple of Washington players are doing what they can to get over in that direction, right? Let's try and get to where he's going to be and be able to make a tackle. Well, this is where the, I think, really just high football IQ side of Saquon Barkley is going to come through. Because watch what Saquon's going to do. Watch him cut back over towards the middle, and he gets through with that entire scenario. Gets to this point where he's, you know, kind of wrapped up. But, like, what a job by Saquon Barkley, right? And the awareness to notice that kind of thing. He's one of those guys who it just seems like he finds ways to get down the field in a way that other guys can't. And everyone talks about his shiftiness. Well, shiftiness doesn't mean anything if you're not running to a better spot, right? You have to be able to also get to a better spot, and Saquon can get to a better spot, which is part of why he's so effective. As I said, though, this is a tough situation, right? Probably not going to go too well. And, and, you know, in fairness, it's not. Like, this is where he's going to get tackled. But I still wanted to show just how hard it is to tackle him. I mean, look at this. I mean, that's just, listen, they got him. They they, they got him, you know, eventually. But, uh, you know, it wasn't ideal. That didn't go particularly well. Eventually, they had to just knock him out of bounds. That was a tough, tough situation for the uh, for the commanders. And again, you could say commanders defense, they stink. Yeah, true. They do stink. But like still doing that to any defense is very impressive in my opinion. So that's the Giants side of things. But again, we know it, right? We know Saquon Barkley is good. What about the Eagles side of things? Because I think a lot of people had the question of, okay, listen, I get what Saquon Barkley, you know, I get that he's good, but don't the Eagles already have a pretty solid rushing unit? Like they have a good offensive line. They can get solid runs anyway. 
So let's go over to this play. So what's going to happen is you see uh, it's, it's Swift, who I think is a good running back. I like DeAndre Swift. I don't think he's Barkley, but I think he's a good quality back. Watch what's going to happen. You see that uh, Hurts is going to flip the ball back, and there's a running lane to get through. And to me, I'm kind of a believer in if you are someone who, if you have a good running game already, but maybe don't ha have an elite running back, well, then you adding an elite running back that becomes more valuable than the average team adding an elite running back. Like, look at what happened. You know, the comparison I keep making is with the Christian McCaffrey thing, where the 49ers went out and got Christian McCaffrey, and a lot of people kind of said, well, well, why? You already run the ball well enough. Well, that's not the goal. The goal is to maximize value anywhere you can. And, you know, what what makes a, you know, a team with a good running game and a bad defense more likely to win football games? Well, yes, fixing the defense is part of it, but also making the running game even better could be a way that helps you win games, right? Maybe your defense will still give up 35 points, but hey, it, you'd rather win 38 to 35 than lose 31 to 35, right? I got way off track. Let me get back to this play. I apologize. This one, you see there's a running lane for a Swift, and watch what's going to happen. I would say he does an all right job here. Like, again, it was fine. I'm not saying that Saquon Barkley definitely would have gotten more yards, but Saquon Barkley definitely would have gotten more yards. I'm sorry. Uh, Saquon probably would have done a better job on a play like this. Again, and that's no dis... Not, I'm not saying Swift did a bad job. Just these are the opportunities for Barkley to maybe make more happen. Like, again, stuff like this is another interesting example of, like, these things are going to come up in a football game where you have this, you know, this situation. You're going to be, you know... Uh, handing the ball off up the middle. However, when this play begins, looks like Swift kind of quickly realizes that that's not the move and is getting towards the outside instead, but there is an Arizona player who can try and make a play. Again, for Philadelphia, sure, they do a pretty good job at scheming up running lanes. They, they do. At the same time, and you know, even right now, I think if uh, Swift ran a little bit towards the right, that might have worked better, although it's easy to say that now with a screenshot, you know, also because Arizona's now trying to get towards the bottom of the screen. Anyway, there's a one-on-one -on -one you know, matchup here for Swift, and these things are going to happen throughout the course of a game and throughout the course of a season, and being able to make guys miss is a massive, massive, you know, positive attribute in certain teams. As you see here, I mean, Swift, again, I don't know what he was supposed to do there. I'm not sure if like that was like a play where he couldn't make, you know, I don't know if he could have made something happen there, but, you know, who maybe could have? Saquon. Again, just throwing it out there as these are examples of plays that can potentially, you know, Saquon can potentially have opportunities to add more value. Not saying he would have on every play, not saying Swift was not doing good on these plays, just more so that, yes, there will be opportunities for Saquon to add more value. And also, you know, uh, talking about his great work in open space, if he's in open space more because they're, he's getting to the second level more because the offensive line is doing their job more, well, then he can, you know, uh, hit more home runs, right? That's the way that works. And as for the contract, it is worth mentioning that actually his cap hit for this year is just $4 million. So it does go up to uh, $14 million next year and uh, $15 million the following year, although not all of that is guaranteed. They're kind of stuck with him for the next two years. But the third year, you could get out of it with just $8 million in dead caps. So if he does fall off a cliff, which is always a, a possibility with running backs, then you, know, you can get out of it. And he's going to be 27 next year. So he's not exactly a, you know, again, running backs, I get it. 27 is at the tail end of their career, just how crazy that works. But at the same time, you are in kind of a situation where it's not the end of the world. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I get the criticisms. I, it's not necessarily the move I would have made, probably, just because like I do agree that they probably need help elsewhere, like in their you know back seven was probably the better way to allocate those resources for me personally. But like, if you're a fan of paying running backs, one there's it's a team with you know a good defense. You should also be a fan of paying a running back when it's a team with bad defense. Like that shouldn't impact it in my opinion. Like at the end of the day, add value however you can add value. That's kind of how I view it. I understand stand the logic. Uh, they I think they did need to add another weapon, so I don't think it's a terrible move or anything like that. That's what I think about all this. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. Of course, as always, thanks for watching.